Comic fam, we got a dope giveaway at the end of the video, so stay tuned. It's a Harley Quinn Poison Ivy number one, signed and sketched by Don McTeague. What's good? Comic book community, we are back for another list of the hottest trending comics in the comic book industry. Sitting here with the Overstreet Price Guide advisor, Russ, the comic sensei. How you doing? I am great, Tom, and I am super excited to be bringing the 10 comics that we picked from the upwardly trending comics list of 20 that's on the key collector app use code tom 101 because we're going to talk about 10 very hot comics today but there's 10 others that you gotta know and you help support the show and you're going to get access to the best comic book app that exists on both android and iphones hit the subscribe button we make a lot of comic book themed content throughout the week and let's jump into this list like we do every saturday at number 10 Number 10 on the list, we have Spider-Woman. Number two, the Jenny Frizen cover. Oh, this is a beautiful, beautiful cover. Now, we had the John Tyler Christopher cover that was out, the red one. This is fairly similar, but you'll know that Jenny was one of the artists that did a fantastic job on all of the Wonder Woman covers. Well, this is just a great one. This is brand new this week, so if you're out there, you might be able to find it for a good price, but it's selling for $130 to $175 raw. Crazy. And that's not the only Jenny Frizen variant on the trending comics list available on Key Collector. Something is Killing the Children is seeing an upwards of 150% increase of copies sold in seven days. And you got to see where that comic book's landing. It's pretty staggering. Number nine on the list, a little surprised that it took this long for this book to start spiking. We have Venom issue number four, the origin of Null. Really the origin of some parts of the Marvel Universe now that Sir Cates has retconned and got his hands in Marvel canon. Well, with the King in Black coming this December, it's a follow-up to the to the event, the, the absolute carnage event that was a hit last year, mm -hmm. everything has come to this point. It's going to be a monumental event, and it's pushed the origin of Null to new numbers. $30 average sales and a high sale at 9.8 of $170. Tom, we also have to keep in mind that number three and number four have third print variants that are skyrocketing right now. Number three, third print with Null on the throne is selling for $300 raw and high sales of $450 at 9.8. And even the number four third print, we're end up seeing that going for $30 raw and as much as $110 and a 9.6. What's intriguing, that's not the only printing variant that we're going to be talking about from this very run. Let's look at number eight on this list. We have Venom issue 25. Wait a minute. Not the variant? No, no. It's cover A. Mm -hmm. That's right. Came out six weeks ago going for $18 average sales. We're seeing a high for this book hitting $25 because at the very end of the book, we saw a cameo of Virus, the new character that everyone is excited to see making his first full appearance this very week in Venom issue 26. Now you had mentioned other printing starting to spike. What came out this week? Venom 25 second print, which basically the wraparound cover is Virus's first cameo appearance in the last panel. So this book is moving very, very quickly and we're seeing the second print even now selling for $10 two days after release. Yeah, that average sale is moving quick, but we're seeing a high sale of $20 for a second print day after release. Everyone's specking on a lot of these books, but you know what? Don't forget, we have that cameo appearance mm -hmm. of a character yet to be named in that very panel, now making his first cover appearance on this wraparound second print. We got to be keeping an eye out for what we believe this to be, maybe a celestial. We don't know. But people are specking that it potentially could tie to Eternals issue number 18, the first appearance of Zyran. Number seven on the list this week, it is everyone's favorite samurai rabbit. As if there was more than one samurai... Wait a second. This is amazing news. So, Usagi Yajimbo number one from Fantagraphics Books, making the list number seven this week. This is a great, great book, and Tom and I have talked about this before. So if you know a little bit about Asagi Ajimbo, he's a you know samurai rabbit roaming the countryside in the Edo period and having adventures. Um, there was an announcement this week that Netflix is optioning kind of a space version of one of his descendants. So we have new character, new story. Highly respected comic book run. Oh, it definitely is, Tom. So we are seeing an average sale of $50 raw and a high sale of $400 at a 9.8. And those may not sound very, very high because 
A few months ago, we were talking about albedo anthropomorphics number two, which is actually Asagi Ajimbo's first appearance. Now, that book is solidly going over a few thousand dollars. I mean, we can't even talk about what they're selling for now because the print run is so low and so few people are willing to even sell it. So if you're looking for Asagi Ajimbo stuff, you want to be looking for the number one of this run, which is moving very, very quickly. 1,600% increase in copies sold after this news broke. I'm a little worried that they're taking this to the future. It's like, yeah, I, I want to see the old run. I'm going to watch this because I'm a fan. However, they're going in such a different direction. It may not affect the comic books as much. That is absolutely correct, Tom. So we're going to be seeing a CGI animated version of this, and it's going to be one of Asagi Ajimbo's descendants. We're going to be following Yuichi as he has an epic quest to become a true samurai. Um, he has a group of misfit heroes, supposedly including a roguish bounty hunter, a cunning ninja, an acrobatic pickpocket, and a faithful pet lizard. This may be a little too much. I mean, part of the thing about Asagi Ajimbo was that he was a loner. You know, there wasn't a whole, I mean, he would have interactions and he would move on. So I'm not quite certain about the whole team dynamic. I will definitely check it out. I mean, I was very pleasantly surprised by Warrior Nun. And I think this is going to be worth checking it out when it does come out on Netflix. Yeah, he was more like a, a, a Ronin. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Se. Ooh, while we're on that subject, why don't we talk about number six on the list? We have TMNT, The Last Ronin, The Ash Can. What is a Ronin? Okay, well, a, a ronin is generally a samurai that doesn't have a master, so they end up going and kind of doing their own adventures or tasks for people. And they would either have a master that had passed away, or they would have someone who um, disowned them, for lack of better terms. They shunned them, and they had to go out in the countryside. Creative powerhouse team Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman writing, drawing pages of TMNT again, but in a dis dystopian future in a world where the turtles are dead which is the sole survivor who is the last ronin we are speculating we are waiting anxiously mm -hmm. to see because this turtle that's being featured he fights with all of the brother's weapons this is going to follow the story of this sole survivor as he goes on an impossible quest a seemingly difficult journey to avenge his fallen family members and find the tastiest pizza in new york city cowabunga this comic book this ash can it's oversized a lot of them are coming out damaged a lot of them are getting banged up in the mail i think this is a good spec book especially for getting graded because they are hitting an average sale of 70 dollars and a bunch of exclusives for this run are already hitting pre-sale, and there are some gorgeous covers. Which one's your favorite? Well, Tom, you know, because I'm such a big fan of Asagi Yajimbo, I really am a massive fan of this Justin Mason variant, which does an incredible homage to Albedo Anthropomorphics number two. I was going to say that one, so... What I'll pick then is the Peach Momoko variant. <laughs> Shout out, you the Peach. I'm excited <laughs> to get this comic, excited to read it, and also pumped to see what's at number five. Number five on the list, big shocker as a Batman fan, Gotham Central number one. Now, we've already seen a Gotham TV show. They wouldn't want to do another Gotham, oh, they kind of do with the Gotham PD. So we have news that HBO Max is in development with a show with more of the Gotham City Police Department. And Gotham Central number one is the first appearance of a bunch of police officers that happen to be at this precinct. $20 average sales for this book and a 9.8 went for $74. I literally threw three of these in my 50 cent bin in the last month. Every time I get a Gotham Central run, I haven't cared about it because there has been no reason to care. Well, now I do. What is fascinating about this deadline report is that this series will feature on HBO Max, but tied to the Matt Reeves universe. We've been talking about, I don't know, JLA Dark, mm -hmm. Constantine, Strange yep. Adventures, Green Lantern. Now we're talking about Gotham PD. This is a whole world that's being developed. And you know that DC's biggest competitor in this like app market, this television market is Marvel Plus. Right. Is this the start of it? It absolutely could be, Tom, but we have to understand that only Hollywood Reporter is calling it Gotham Central, so the spec could be on an entirely different book. We also have to look at a couple other appearances of some fantastic people who are at 
the precinct, we have the first appearance of Lieutenant Bullock, which happened in Detective Comics 441 in 1974, and the first time they actually called him Harvey Bullock wasn't until Batman 361, almost a full decade later. Both of those are going for about 20 bucks in high grade, and then another really great person who works the precinct, Renee Montoya. You end up seeing that book, which is Batman 475 from 1992. That's been a solid seller in the $8 to $10 range for years. That's currently seeing high sales of 20 bucks with that great ventriloquist cover. Now, I said deadline. I meant to say Hollywood Reporter, but it doesn't matter because I have my key alerts on. Make sure your notifications are on for Key Collector Comics, comic fam, because when you get that notification, when one of these things becomes more solid, like there is a definitive name, you know there's going to be an alert letting you know what's up. Number four on the list, we have JSA Secret Files and Origins number one. Now, this book we had been talking about a few months ago because it was an early Stargirl appearance. Well, now it's seeing an appearance on the list because Nuclon becomes Atom Smasher, and it's the first appearance of the new Atom Smasher. We have confirmation this week, which has caused this book to spike to 950% in sales, that Noah Centineo has been cast as Atom Smasher in the Black Adam movie. Staggering percent increase in copies sold in seven days. $30 average sales, $60 highs for this book. He's got ties to the Golden Age Adam. This is a descendant of the JSA member. And seeing that he's going to be incorporated into the Black Adam movie tells me that JSA may be just around the corner. It's getting me excited. I want to give a quick shout out to All-Star Squadron issue 25, a once dollar bin book available out there. Get to hunting, comic fam, hitting $40 highs for the first full appearance in canon of the Atom Smasher. I am so stoked. Number three on the list, we see Strange Academy number one. Now, this great book from Scotty Young and Umberto Ramos has been getting a lot of buzz since it first came out in March. Then we had this big, long pandemic break where we didn't have a lot of comics coming out, and issue number two just came out. So we are hearing a lot of crazy buzz about this book because there are rumors being started by people reading it that this would be a good team fit for Disney+. Plus. There is no article, there is no leak, there is nothing coming on at all whatsoever that says that there's anything in production. It's just something that would fit really well with Disney+, Plus. is kind of what people are thinking. So we're looking at raws of this going at $25, and a 9.8 of the main cover going for $200. Put this into perspective. There's an incredible looking one in 50 variant that is a breakfast club homage. Those were going two months ago for $200 for a 9.8. And now those are going for $500 in a 9.8. This book is moving very, very quickly. San Diego Comic-Con, the virtual convention where there's going to be a lot of news broke is happening next week, starting Wednesday. So let's keep an eye out. I don't see this happening before Silk, my man, but it's kids. It's kind of got the Harry Potter Marvel vibe to it. I dig it. I'm watching this. I think this is a good spec to read. Maybe grab a cover A. I'm not going crazy on these graded books, though. No, definitely not. And something else you probably shouldn't be going crazy for is number two on this list, Wildcats number one. All of you 90s kids, all of you Image fans know exactly what I'm talking about. I think even on on the key collector notification that came out, it said (laughs) a lot of copies were printed. Like, there wasn't even a print run because we have no idea how many actual copies were printed of this book. It's a massive print run. We're talking over 500,000 most likely five dollar average sales a staggering increase in copies sold of 1100 percent for this jim lee created character back in the wildstorm days that would later get sold to dc and incorporated into canon to for this day to come for james diney and the fourth to include him in a batman run we have the grifter oh it's so amazing to see this character now dc bought this character writes from Jim Lee and even the new 52 the grifter had a little mini series but he wasn't a character that anyone cared about well now we've got the grifter working for Lucius Fox so you know he's going to be showing up in this whole Joker War Batman thing yeah the business manager to the Dark Knight to Bruce Wayne I'm interested I want to see but I am definitely not paying more than a dollar for this book and even when I find it it's going to make me a little irritated that there's a little bit more spec behind this common comic book well you can find the one in a 
100 gold cover for this book, which is a little bit more scarce. Oh, and comic fam, major announcement. Maestro number one is coming next month. We're going to find out the origin of one of the best Hulk characters created by Peter David Drawn, originally by one of my all-time favorite artists, George Perez. Yeah, we got Maestro coming next month, and I had to do a mystery mail call exclusive. This is so incredible. Now, you have seen his Taskmaster variant, but we got Valerio Jean Giordano to do a Maestro number one just for the mystery mail call. This looks incredible, and Tom and I are so excited to bring this to you. You got to sign up, ComicTom101.com. These will run out. We will sell out this month. This book is fire. Yeah, it's either sell out or they're going to get us on the damages. One of the two is going to happen. <laughs> Comic fam, hit that subscribe button. We make this list every single week, and let's chat about some more Venom spec. At number one, Donny Cates making the list. We have Venom issue number nine. Cover A, the first full appearance. Fight me on it, Sir Cates of Dylan Brock. This book has been selling solidly for over a year now. And I know there was a lot of people talking about whether the first appearance was in number seven or number nine, but this is the first full appearance. $25 raw. We're seeing $200 for a CGC 9.8. Again, Dylan Brock. There are a lot of other characters coming into the run. There are other things happening. And really the focal point does seem to be Eddie Brock's son. An increase of copies sold of 113% in the last seven days. Post this King in Black news. The spec is going nuts for this run, but it makes sense. I mean, let's piece some of this together. New villains to spec on. Of course, Null. We're talking about Null of us every week. The Black Winter. Ties to Null, probably. Talking about that nearly every week. What, we got a new character, Virus, that is now incorporated. We're specking on Celestials. We're also, like, what's going on with the Sleeper? Like, what's up with that connection to, to Dylan Brock? I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm following it. And I don't think that this whole thing centers around Cletus Cassidy. I don't think this all centers around Eddie Brock. I think it's all about Dylan. And I think the comic fam agrees. So they're putting their money behind this new character. Now, we already know that he has had the ties to the symbiote since absolute birth. So we have a very, very strong feeling that something is going to happen between Null and Dylan. Yeah, man. Are they family members? Are they related or something? I, I don't know. But that's why Spec's so much fun. Comic fam, let's give a big, big thank you to Scout Comics right now. All right. We talked about a giveaway we were doing last week, Assassin and Son, that profits are going to the family of the fallen hero. Shad Gaspard valiantly sacrificed his life to save the life of his son, and Scout Comics has given over $7,000 so far to help support with funeral costs and everything else for the family. And we have three winners of three sets. Three sets of this variant going out to the comic fam. Shout out to Mr. Shark JP23, Jesse Lynch, and Tim Penarts, all getting this set courtesy of Scout Comics. We appreciate you, comic fam. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe the video, and then, of course, as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Ooh, check out the podcast because you know what? San Diego Comic-Con is next week and we got a video that you need to watch to prepare for it. That's right. The con scene isn't over. It's still happening. And make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below for an opportunity to win this amazing Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy comic that is remarked and sketched by Don McTeague. Geek responsibly, comic fam.